Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant, and this is Small Business School. There are no tests or textbooks here, but many lessons we can learn. Every week we take you inside a small company to meet the founder, and we know we're lucky because we spend hours with these fascinating people. Our goal is to distill the genius of one person into just 30 minutes. It's always difficult, but this week it was a particular challenge. Marty Edelston started his company in his basement in 1973 with $5,000. Today, he owns the largest circulation newsletter ever published. What you are about to experience is what we call a master class. If you've ever studied music, you may have attended a master class. A master class is not taught by a teacher. It's taught by a professional musician who makes a living doing music. Here, our master class is taught by a successful small business owner. Come with me now to school to meet Marty Edelston in Greenwich, Connecticut. Marty Edelston is a genuine, card-carrying, think-aholic. His mind never stops. When he's not in the office, he uses a home office, a bedside table, and his exercise bike as places from which to capture ideas. He brings work home every night and on the weekends. He solves problems, edits copy, reads, and does correspondence at home. Then his wife, Rita, leaves early each morning to take the work in to distribute to employees. He is as big on physical fitness as he is on mental fitness. Push-ups on the knuckles is simply run-of-the-mill for karate guys like Marty. Why are you doing push-ups on your knuckles? Well, that's what they told me to do, and it feels good. It's very simple. You don't have to think at all, and it's just uh, cleansing. So the, the, the real aim is to have the focus on the first knuckle. Hmm. And while I focus on the first knuckle, it rolls over to the second knuckle. Why is the aim to focus on the first knuckle? Well, that's a good place to hit if you're ever going to hit. But it's, I see the oh. karate really as a, uh, a conditioning program. There's nothing better than karate. As you can see, it's just seconds with no effort. And the punching bag is a great stress reliever. No, we can the office is just up. a few minutes from home, so little time is spent commuting. I never wanted, incidentally, to start my own company. That was an accident. I didn't have that ambition, and we're not trying to make it a big company at the present time. We have a mission, which is to help people make it in this increasingly hostile world. Boardroom Inc. produces information. With 1.2 million subscribers of Bottom Line, including me for the last 10 years, Boardroom sets the standard. And they also do Bottom Line Business, Bottom Line Tomorrow, Health Confidential, and Money's Worth. For nearly 25 years, Marty Edelston has been building a business which today would be the envy of any entrepreneur. His company generates $110 million in sales with only 80 employees. This is a productivity rate five times the average Fortune 500 company. If you listen and watch carefully, you will see his secrets. One of Crystal's big jobs here is to greet everybody warmly. That's in her job description. Oh, yeah. that, that she has to be a very enthusiastic greeter. That how she starts everybody's day and ends everybody's day is very important. Yes, it is. 
I get together with myself in the mirror and try to figure out what kind of nice greetings to make everybody feel good about being here. And we had to work on that in the beginning. Oh, yeah. One it doesn't... gave me a few books and inspired me. One doesn't think of the importance of the receptionist. You know, you're just here to check people in and out and stuff, but not, not at our place. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you, your tone sets the place for the home, uh, sets the tone for everybody. When they hear about Marty, business owners and leaders in big corporations scratch their heads and say, how does he do it? He treats people with respect, and he is more fascinated with the way the mind works than he is his balance sheet. Here's the story from the beginning. One day I got a call from uh, Norman Podhoritz, the editor of Commentary, one of America's leading intellectual publications. Um, wanting me to be the business manager, so we got together and I did that. So I moved and I sold advertising, promoted circulation, started a book club, published greeting cards, uh, um, started a record club. It was very exciting, but it's for a nonprofit organization. And it's a super intellectual publication. It wasn't too far I could take it. And in the meantime, some thoughts started seeping in that I liked the business books. They told you what to do, how to sell, certainly. Right. How to plan, how to fire, how to hire. Whatever it was, there's a book on it. And they're all, in, some are better than others, but it's worth it. I would learned early on that I couldn't spend money on books unwisely. Because it's so good to take ideas and expose it to others. Mm -hmm. One of the other people is a friend. I'm just uh, writing a note. I'm gonna have lunch with him in a week or so said, well, why don't you put little things in your publication, too? They're great pearls mm -hmm. that get lost. Wonderful three lines, six lines in this magazine, in Automotive Age, in Rubber World, whatever it is, that stuff is there. Well, why don't you pick that stuff up? Great. So I wound up making this amalgam of mm -hmm. stuff. I looked, it took me years uh, to um, look for money, or I looked for money. I started the recession of 19, the early 70s. You personally started yeah. the recession of the 70s. The, yeah, business was great up to that time, and mm -hmm. every time I took a step forward with an idea, the financial world moved backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so the great Fred Adler in an interview uh, uh, said, happiness is positive cash flow, which was very meaningful. I, I thought that means you've got to make a lot of money. Well, you don't. You just have to see to it that the stuff that comes in is more than the stuff that goes out. And th that's what you want to get to. Uh, so I, I went to a number of periodicals, because I knew a lot of people, and said, I'll tell you, you run this ad, and I had the best copywriter in the business. And actually, there's pictures on the wall there. Um, prepare an ad for me. You run this ad, and I will give you a, a share of my business, one share of stock, for every paid subscriber that I get from your publication, which was fine, except conceptually. So you could do it with nothing. Mm -hmm. That it cost the periodicals nothing. Right. Because um, they would only use it when they had an empty space. And God doesn't bring down all the ads and all the editorial and put it together and have it work out to a perfect printing form. Mm -hmm. So in one month or another, there had to be some open space. So I guess I had six or eight periodicals that went along. Unfortunately, the ads didn't produce, but I took the copy and put it into a direct mail form. And somewhere along the way, on one of the framed things here, I did my initial test, which was either 12,000 pieces or 17,000 pieces. Mm -hmm. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't do what I did then. Uh, indirect mail today. No, today is what you're saying. Yeah, you I, tested I with with a small the small sample. In your view, seventeen thousand back correct. then worked, but it wouldn't work today. Well, uh, it shouldn't have worked then. Oh, okay. But, but it did. We learned a lot. But most important, the concept was good. Got a good response. I had some developed a relationship with the great Peter Drucker, and wanted to go visit him and just discuss that. And Marty, I'm going to be in New York. Uh, and I was going to do a zillion things, but I couldn't do it all. How do you do it? Um, and how do I find a good editor, which was <laughs> important. So we got together, and uh, how many of these things are you going to start at once? Just one a year. It's well, good. You're the editor. Me? I can't spell. I can't do this. I never thought of it. I mean, all the things I had done, I'd never thought of being the editor. 
the, the, everyone is smart. I'm a, a salesman, boy, am I a good salesman. But I got to find a good editor. So you have drive, you have curiosity, you will be it. No, it's a very important moment. Because then I didn't have to be big, I didn't have to be Time Life or American Express. I just had to strive for ideas. What's the truth? And I, I've been an incredible driver for the truth ever since. Okay, idea number one. The centerpiece of Boardroom's corporate culture is something called eye power. Well, well eye, eye power is a, a simple suggestion system that's sort of automated. We have many premiums in inventory in very small quantities that are still usable, but they're just not being used. So my idea is why not test a premium offer for bottom line personal or money's worth in which we give a mystery gift of, of six different premiums, our choice. It was something that Peter Drucker suggested, not with that name, but he said make your meetings more interesting. Ask the people at your next meeting for two suggestions, which I did, and I was just knocked over by the suggestions. They were just so fantastic. Because it's the, the essence of the Japanese system, which is Kaizen, and um, that was given to them by Deming as continuous improvement. It was imposed on them by MacArthur. Deming was brought over there by MacArthur, and the leaders of Japanese business were told, you pay attention to this man. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was imposed on relatively small businesses at that time, and it just grew and grew and grew. Um, that that it, it works, it, it's just amazing, and it's not just the suggestions, that's the detail, it's how we get people to think, and it brings about a huge amount of cooperation. Uh, the iPower meeting that you did attend um, only hinted at it, but, but at some of these meetings, so you'll come out with an idea and someone else will say, but we could make it blue, and then someone said, yes, but we can put yellow polka dots on it, and obviously, I'm saying it wrong, but it, it's right. just so exciting when that, that building The give and on. take and the back and forth right. between departments and between units who would not normally talk to one another and then maybe eventually um, jeopardize each other's productivity, not on purpose, but just because they weren't talking. But the eye power gets them together yeah. to talk. And we've, we've used it. Once you become adept at it, you can use it in other ways. We've, we've had differences between people here, some really unpleasant situations where you're going to have in any business. We had it, too. And um, others have tried to solve it. And then I came in a couple of times. And I uh, say, Hattie, uh, would you please give me five reasons, five things you can do that would make Marty's life better? And Marty, would you please give me uh, five things that you can do to make Hattie's life better? Mm -hmm. And also, Hattie, would you give me five things that Marty is doing that steps all over your feet and vice versa? But give it to me. Don't exchange it. <laughs> Give it to me, I'm in the middle, okay. and then I will edit it out and change the language so it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. And it's just incredible. It's just like magic. <laughs> iPower, then, is a way for you to, to describe your, cult, your corporate culture. Indeed. Besides the ideas, the important thing with iPower is the uh, development of the individual. This is uh, by Orsi Dershaw. This is a slice of a brain. Boardroom's headquarters is filled with art because Marty believes art teaches. Art makes order out of chaos. Okay, the, these are the clubs of virtue, uh, which are, uh, they, they look like junk. They're really quite valuable. And uh, that it's, uh, it says you're going to be beaten. It ties into beaten children. You're going to be charming or I'll beat you. You be patient, sit there, or I'll beat you. You be efficient or I'll beat you. No, I'm, uh, th that's not the way to run things. And as it happens, I was an abused child, yeah. not a uh, sexually abused child. Mm -hmm. no. But your father hit you? Yeah, a lot. But, I mean, in that uh, period, it was the thing to do, that mm -hmm. the children were to be seen and not heard, mm -hmm. and you do exactly what they, mm -hmm. the parents say, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot uh, mm -hmm. from that and trying mm -hmm. to change that. And, and not be that kind of a dad. Well, I was a bad one in the beginning. I had you to were? learn a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't anywhere near as bad as he was. But then I would, um, said, hey, this isn't right. When my kids came into the business, I had to deal differently. And I was a tough, very tough boss for a long time. Um, really tough. Uh, but when my kids were here, I couldn't fire them. And I couldn't... Uh, uh, I had, had to treat them fairly, mm -hmm. so if I treated them specially, I had to treat you specially. So, then so I had to change my whole... Having way. them come in elevated the quality of the workplace. That was very helpful.
and uh, we work not to argue. I learned along early on. I had a terrible time. I won't go through the detail. But one per my typesetter made a tiny mistake, and it was a, before a deadline, and I was incredibly abusive verbally. And the editor said, but there's another way, Marty. No, there's not. If one of us is going to get ulcers, it's not going to be me. There's another way. There's another way. Now, the, the interesting thing is that, that there was. It took me years to find it. It's really important. And that is that, that we seek the truth. So I don't remember the last time I had an argument with anybody. Because I'll be on either side. I, I have an idea. I have a position. And you give me a, a better something or other, I'll come over to your side. But let's seek the truth. If we can, don't have a good answer, let's stop and we'll come back again and come up with a good answer. But I, I have no idea when the last time was that I had an argument. But isn't that goes? Doesn't that go back to what you said? Your people philosophy is number one to respect the other person. Correct. Karen, where are you? Here we go, kid. Oh, uh, thank Happy you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Karen. Happy anniversary <laughs> to you. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. I'm not finished. I'm not oh. finished. <laughs> Is there another, another? Yes, the best part. Here's wishing you a happy day in every way on your anniversary day and hope for many years to say greetings on this happy day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is this company different from the company you came from? Oh yes, much different, much different. This is much better. This is the best place I've ever worked. Do you think money is a motivator? Yes. It's not the only motivator. Uh, recognition is very important. And, that, and uh, treating people with respect is very, very important. So my people here are all paid well, but they also love to collect high power money. Over and over again, I ask myself, how do they do it? What is their secret? I think the answer can be found in Marty's book, Eye Power. He teaches us to recognize the whole person. He wants us to tap into the tremendous talents and abilities each of us has. He wants each of us to be our best. And as a business practice, he forces each person to think, what is my power? Then in a systematic way, he encourages each person to bring ideas to the table. Employees aren't rewarded for agreeing with others. They are rewarded for their own unique contributions. Marty's Secret, the source of this virtually miraculous sales per employee, only happens in a business where people are treated with profound respect. Marty told me one of the suggestions that comes consistently through the years is the request for more computer power. You may not publish anything, but we all need to look good on paper. As a small business user, it's probably doubly important uh, to look really great. I asked Stephen Jackson graphics, to show me how to make my sales presentations sales look more great. exciting. And presentation graphics um, are an excellent way to, to look good and, uh, and look professional. All right, so we don't just have blocks of copy. Right. We have Boring. something more yeah. exciting. Much more exciting, much more engaging, much more easily remembered, much more effective in persuading. Um, that's the title page. All right. uh, agenda is typical for presentations. So if I were doing this, I would type right here, learn today, earn, D-O-M-O-R-O-W. There There's there. my mission statement, learn today, earn tomorrow. And, and it's all on this nice page with this big, bold heading. Already done, that big brass plaque. All right. And um, if we want some clip art. We could put a world map because we're a global business. Okay. So let's in fact find one of those. I saw, I thought I saw one. Oh. That's pretty global. That's, that's Asia. Pretty, that's, Is Asia okay? That's not enough. No, we'll take Asia. We're on in, we're on in Beijing. We'll we take it. a world map. World map, that's what, I or want globe. that globe. I'll take that globe, I like that. You're, we'll size that graphic image. You're making it fit right underneath the we'll mission statement. The Great. To read the entire script of this program, go to smallbusinessschool.org. Rita, Marty's wife, has worked with him all along. Um, Marty used to get the mail in New York, and he'd come home on the bus carrying a big sack on his back. The mail, we'd open it up at home, and between the kids and me, we'd sort it out. I made the deposits, um, you know, checked everything off, made the deposits, and then we'd send the orders out for uh, these little speedomat metal plates to be made. 
And okay. When you were doing that back then, did you ever dream that she would eventually would have 110 million in sales with 80 no. people? No. That was that was that was a different world. I mean, you still think back and say, "My goodness, where from from there to here?" No, it, it's and when and every time we think back of what we had in the basement when we started, how did we ever deal with all this stuff down there? Would you say you're the size you want to be? Um, we're having a lot of we've been discussing this for the last couple of years, and right now as I move close to my 68th year. Um, you know, 67th birthday, 68th year, uh, it takes on greater seriousness because we have a succession team in place and they are working with a training group to, that trains um, succession teams, literally, and they're coming up with their mission statement. All three of Marty's children, Sarah, Marjorie and Sam, work in the business and today, along with another 15-year boardroom veteran, Brian Kurtz, they form what is called the succession team. The company has spent 25 years building a structure that's Marty focused and we have 85 people who all look to Marty. And now we're going to have a new structure that's going to have a team of four rather than one and we have to build a whole new infrastructure in. None of us are Marty, none of us have his creative gut and his sensitivities, so we have to figure out how we operate in the future. And none um, of us want to work 20 hours a day. Like he does. Right. Well, we're at different life stages. He, right. When he right. started the company, his children were all, we were all older elementary school, junior high school age. He had a wife who was home and 100% supported. We have two women who are married, so that we've got husbands, we've got children that we have to deal with. We have two fathers with young children. Um, so that we all want different balance in our lives and want to, we're at different stages where we need to know our children and, and mm -hmm. be able to involve ourselves in that way as well. Marty, like most entrepreneurs, didn't know what to do. He knew he had to do something, but he didn't know how to teach us. And we, he would try something and we would try to respond to it and we were never talking the same language. We didn't know what to do because we'd never been in the situation before. He'd never been in the situation before. And Marge, through the Family Business Council, had identified that there are people out there who can help us. For one thing, we've, we've been getting together as a foursome uh, for several years now and just talking through, talking about issues. And now for the first time, we're being asked and really sort of compelled, you know, forced to uh, come up with group opinions on a subject. Marty said to us, um, go have lunch, go deal with succession, go figure out what's going to happen. What happens we, when I get hit by a bus? He said to th the three Five of you. Right. Five years ago. Five years ago. Go, right. go have lunch and come back and let's talk about this stuff. And the three of us went to lunch, and the first subject that came up was, we can't do this without Brian because he's such an integral part of the marketing department. He's been here for 15 years. At that point, he'd been here for 10 years, but he is Mr. Direct Mail. He knows everybody. He knows his business better than anyone in the business, and he knew a portion of the direct marketing and list business that none of us did, and it was someone we work well with him. We feel like siblings with him. Well, you know, how many businesses survive from first generation to second generation? The, the, the Most odds businesses are... fail at 27 years. You all are right on the cusp of failing. Right, and, and, then, but that's, and that's still first that's generation. That's why you're doing, most businesses don't make it through the succession. Right. That's why what you're doing is so smart, and that's why you will. Right. Because what you're doing will prevent right. the failure. We have to figure out what's our vision. Marty has his vision. He probably talked to you about survival in a hostile world. And we have to figure out our definition of that vision, which is very much in sync, but is it exactly the same? Maybe, maybe not. Here's Marty's advice to all of us who would like to build our businesses. Well, it's classic advice. Know what you're doing and uh, find out in every possible way. Of course, it's, it's best if you... Uh, are moving into an area that you're fully cognizant uh, of, but then read everything you possibly can. And people are so lazy, that's just incredible. You said earlier there were a handful of books that you really believe in, in terms of business advice. Can well, you recall the list? Well, or? it's really life advice. I'm not sure I can remember all of them offhand, because there's so much going around in this uh, little head here. Um, Everything is selling. You have to sell so much. Um, whatever you sold me on the interview, I have to sell you on doing it right, etc. Uh, the best book is um, How I Raised Myself from Failure, Success, and Selling by Frank Betcher. And now, a lot of years, 30 years after or so after its original publication, it's uh, still very much alive. And oddly, it was featured, as you may recall, in the film Barcelona 
it was the silliest thing I ever saw. I mean, to build a, a, a sophisticated film around that book and people's mm -hmm. dedication to it, mm -hmm. but it was a wonderful film, actually. I mean, the, the concept was silly, but it was really beautiful and it was so powerful. The measure that you want to apply to everything all the time is how, what's the highest use of my time right now? Sometimes it's to sleep, of course. Um, sometimes it's to skip rope. Sometimes it's to do push-ups. And what continues to fascinate a person who has achieved so much success? I'm most interested in the continuation of our society. And remember, Marty has proved that the miraculous happens when people are treated with respect. We'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.